Today is Thursday, August 26, 2021. Welcome to Blackstone Intelligence. Multiple U.S. and congressional officials have been talking to reporters at Politico, uh, saying that U.S. bureaucrats in Kabul have given the Taliban a list of thousands of names of people that the United States is trying to evacuate from Afghanistan. This is everyone from American citizens who are over there working to uh, Afghans who have worked as interpreters and provided other assistance to American forces, um, Afghans with green cards and so forth. Now, the problem is that the Taliban is known for executing dissidents who they believe are traitors for working with the Americans during the war against the Taliban. So naturally, giving what is potentially a kill list <laughs> of these Afghan turncoats to the Taliban is seen by some as basically signing death warrants for these people. Now, while the U.S., uh, while the CIA influenced mainstream media in the United States has been quick to demonize the Taliban, uh, and we're hearing story after story in Western media about how awful the Taliban is, and they are. <laughs> the fact is that the United States is working hand in hand with the Taliban on these evacuations. In fact, the United States is relying primarily on the Taliban as the main source of uh, military security outside of the actual grounds of the Hamid Karzai International Airport, where they're trying to evacuate everyone from. So to try to facilitate uh, the passage of these Americans and all of these Afghan, uh, pro-American Afghan uh, people, trying to get them out of this bottleneck and through the Taliban security checkpoints so that they can get to the airport for evacuation, the United States thought, hey, let's just give the list of the names of the, all these people to the Taliban. Now, my position is that why are we having to rely on the Taliban? Why couldn't we have evacuated people before the Taliban took control? So in case you didn't know, the Taliban is already back in complete control of the government of Afghanistan. Uh, they seized power about a week ago. Uh, and the U.S.-backed Afghan president, he fled the country literally literally with nothing more than the clothes on his back. Uh, the fact that we're getting out is shouldn't come as a surprise. Donald Trump said last year that he was, uh, you know, set this May 1st deadline to try and get the United States out of Afghanistan and the war. But in that, uh, in those press conferences he gave from, from the White House, he talked about how uh, he was speaking directly with the Taliban leaders and that he looked forward to them taking control because doing so would result in the Taliban fighting the terrorists rather than the United States uh, because the Taliban is, is uh, anti-ISIS. Well, uh, as today's terrorist attacks by ISIS demonstrate, uh, not only did Trump not defeat ISIS, but they remain a significant force to be reckoned with. As of this recording, which is about 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, the media is reporting that there were 12 U.S. soldiers who are among the dozens of people massacred today uh, in the suicide bombings there in Kabul. Uh, one went off. A car bomb was set off, is what they said. Uh, around the time, there was a shootout between U.S. Marines and ISIS forces. And then there was... Uh, there was also uh, a bomb that went off, a suicide bomber detonated near a hotel where U.S. and U.K. soldiers were were staying at. Uh, so we, we've got got a big bloody mess over there. And the Biden administration is being accused by Republicans of getting out of Afghanistan too quickly. But the fact is, it was President Trump who set a deadline of May 1st to have all the troops out. So Donald Trump deserves credit for pushing for this withdrawal, just as Biden deserves credit for seeing it through. Here is where Biden deserves chastisement, in my mind, and, and very much so. His administration has had eight months to prepare for this withdrawal. There simply is no excuse, no excuse for this unmitigated disaster that has unfolded over the last couple of weeks. 
when we break it down and look at the components, what, what went wrong? Well, first of all, the CIA didn't provide the necessary intelligence to make a safe withdrawal possible. Now, today and in recent days, there's some generic, oh, you know, the, the ISIS is going to strike. But they were not conveying all of the details, all of the information they had well in advance to know that we are not absolutely can't have a safe evacuation unless it's done uh, uh, in a certain way. Why does the CIA not want the USA to leave? Well, that's because the war in Afghanistan is a CIA, CIA operation from top to bottom. They don't want the United States to leave. When the Taliban wipes out uh, the opium poppy fields again, which is what they had done pre 9-11 when they controlled Afghanistan, the CIA is not going to have black ops money. They're going to lose a massive amount of money coming from the illegal drug trade. They don't want us to leave. They want U.S. troops and Blackwater uh, uh, type mercenaries over there protecting them and their operations and providing bodyguard services for this warlord uh, who's growing poppy fields against this warlord. They're running the drug trade over there. Uh, so the CIA uh, has got a sister agency involved in this, and that's the U.S. State Department. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul is our State Department's outpost in Afghanistan. The, the U.S. State Department uh, the foreign policy wing of the U.S. government. It's just a sister agency to the CIA. That's how it was set up uh, when the CIA and the State Department, these things were merged together in the minds of uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, which which runs the uh, U.S. State Department. All of this is, is deep state to, to the core. So when you've got the CIA uh, screwing up, it's not a surprise at all that the State Department's U.S. Embassy in Kabul didn't do their part either. They had lists of these Afghan allies who have been helping the American forces for years, yet they did nothing to coordinate any reasonable effort to prepare those allies or our own American personnel, for that matter, for this for an orderly withdrawal. And then we've got the U.S. military leadership. I'm not talking about the common soldiers. I'm talking about the, the brass at the top. They're also to blame. The, the lack of sufficient troop presence to control the perimeter around the airport to allow for a safe evacuation of the Americans, that's poor military planning. Now, as I said, President Biden, he's the commander-in-chief. He is ultimately to blame. The buck stops with the commander-in-chief. Biden knew that this withdrawal was coming. He knew it was going to be messy, but he failed to provide sufficient leadership to prepare for a safe evacuation. And he has continued to provide insufficient leadership as conditions have spiraled downward over the last couple of weeks. And because of this lack of leadership, we have now lost American lives. And I would say that if if their soldiers are one thing, uh, tragic, but that's the nature of being a soldier. But if any American citizens who are over there working lose their lives because of the bungled uh, withdrawal, Joe Biden should answer to the U.S. Congress. They should haul him in and have a little talk with him about impeachment. The question is, do we really want Biden removed from office at this point, knowing that Kamala Harris would become our next president after him? Could things get any worse? While Biden is ultimately responsible for this debacle, I, I just want to emphasize we should not fall victim to the propaganda against him. Yes, he's to blame for the, the parts that he screwed up. But Biden didn't start the war. Biden did not perpetuate the war. Biden is not the person, the deep state, the entity that does not care who the U.S. president is, whether it's Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, anybody in between, they don't care. The deep state and its military industrial complex 
which makes money off the blood of innocent people, they are the true villains in all this. Think about it. All throughout the Trump presidency, Donald Trump Trump promised to pull troops out of Afghanistan. It was a campaign promise. But every single time he tried to take action, he was bombarded with opposition from the pro-war corporations, from the media whores, from the military brass, from the State Department bureaucrats, from the corrupt politicians owned by the deep state uh, uh, military industry, and, and by the intelligence bosses. All of these deep state players who wanted to keep the war going. They wanted Afghanistan to remain a forever war. They torpedoed Trump each time because they knew his weakness. They knew how to do it. Media coverage, bad media coverage. Oh, he doesn't care about the people. Americans are going to lose their lives. Trump flip-flopped over and over again throughout his presidency. Not just on uh, the, the issue of Afghanistan and Syria and other matters of national security, but on gun rights, on immigration policies, and so on. Any time the tide of popular sentiment was against him in a big way, he would, uh, he would vacillate. And of course, the, the popular sentiment in America is manipulated and controlled by the mainstream media. So these same deep state players that tried to torpedo uh, Trump or did successfully torpedo Trump's effort to end the war. These are the same people that are right now trying to torpedo Biden's efforts to end the U.S. presence in Afghanistan. It's a last ditch effort. The difference is that despite his bungling, Biden has not been swayed so far by all the negative media coverage against him the way that it stopped Trump or swayed Trump. The deep state players that have their hands in uh, the Afghanistan cookie jar, they've all played their parts in trying to prevent this withdrawal. They have dragged their heels over the past year, assuming that if they just don't make the necessary preparations to pull America out of Afghanistan in a way that is dignified and safe, if Biden looked at it and saw, geez, we're not ready to withdraw. If we do, there might be some casualties and that's going to look bad for me and my political career. They banked on Biden being like Trump and not moving forward. But he did it anyway. He didn't dramatically extend the deadline. He did a little bit. Rather than leaving on May 1st, like Trump had set, he allowed another three months for preparations, but no more. But did the, uh, did the U.S. Embassy prepare? No. Did the military prepare? No. Not the CIA. None of the components necessary to make this happen did their parts. Heads should roll after this in all of these agencies. Because this was a complete systemic failure. The entire system failed the American people and failed our allies. So we get close to August 31st. The deep state sees, oh, crap, this isn't working. <laughs> All of the heavy media bombardment against, you know, CNN turned against Biden. You've got to be pretty, uh, pretty bad. You've got to be really sticking it to the to the deep state apparatus for CNN to come out against the Democrat president. That doesn't happen very often, but they have not stopped attacking him. So when it became clear that he's going to hold to this August 31st deadline, it was too late by that point. These various agencies could not make any uh, redeemable preparations Biden was going to end the U.S. war in Afghanistan come hell or high water, or in this case, come a Saigon-style humiliating evacuation. So is Biden responsible? Absolutely. But his incompetence in standing up to the deep state, to me, is less of a crime 
than the crime of the deep state itself trying to perpetuate the war in Afghanistan by refusing to prepare an efficient exit. Now, here's what's on my mind. Given the CIA's past false flags and their role in the assassination of JFK for standing up to them after the Bay of Pigs disaster, doesn't surprise me that they are waging an all-out media war against Biden. But the deep state is going to do its best to destroy him because he stood up to them. And you just don't do that. It's not just about Joe Biden. It's about every president to come after Joe Biden. Precedent has to be set. If you stand up to them, if you stand up to the deep state, they will annihilate you. They are not, uh, they don't favor Republicans. They don't favor Democrats. They favor those who allow them to do whatever the hell they want. So the only question in my mind at this point is if the CIA is willing to take their revenge against Biden as far as they took their revenge against President Kennedy. For Blackstone Intelligence, I'm Jake Morfonios. Thank you.